Hello everyone and welcome by the Orchid Saga. So yeah, today we're going to take this uh, fairly big orchid out of the pot because it needs a uh, repot. And this is my Colmenara Mycea Red. So we'll show you the tag. My beautiful black tag. <laughs> I've been making these uh, over a couple of weeks and I think these are very pretty. I saw these on the Ed's Orchids and later uh, I heard Roger talking about it and I thought, yeah, that's a very good idea. But anyhow, we are not here for the tag. We are here for the orchid, and we have a new growth here and we have one here. I hope you can see it. There it is. And this time it's decided to make another new growth. So I'm very happy about it. So we will have now three directions of growth instead of two. And as you can see, the bulbs are getting fairly big, so it needs a repot. This one has a little bit of space there, and you can see it's a very new root there. But I'm, I would prefer to repot it a little bit earlier, but I didn't have the media, so I needed the media. So that root is now a bit longer, but I hope I can save it. And you can see here, it's really on the edge of the pot. And like I said, the bulbs to get very thick. So uh, I think it, uh, it really needs a new uh, home to grow uh, on the new uh, growths. So let's uh, get over to my uh, uh, potting table and uh, we'll, we'll uh, try to get it out of its pots. So here she is, the beautiful orchid. And I wanted to film this one because uh, we do also care collapse uh, about this one. And actually it was the first one I ever did a care collab uh, about. Orchid. so this one is a uh, very special special and uh, for updates I can refer to this uh, video so um, yeah first of all let's uh, get it out of this outer pot and have a look so yeah I really really do not look forward to getting this out of its pot because of the uh, amounts of roots there and yeah, but it has to be. It has to happen. But I don't uh, don't want to break them, of course. But and we have even a new growing tip on the knees here, on a uh, bit of older looking uh, root. You can see now in the middle of the screen, there's a little point sticking out. I will try my best to save them all, but it's going to be a bit difficult. And I think I can zoom in a little bit more. Hopefully, like this. So you can uh, see what I'm doing. So yeah, I now cannot put it down because otherwise I will break it uh, for sure. And this is very compact, as you can imagine. So I'm, I try to massage the pot, squeeze a little bit. I see a lot of new roots, root tips of quite a lot. So it's a good time to do a root pot still, of course, but I would prefer to do it a little bit earlier. But I, uh, like I said, I didn't have a media and um, yeah, last year I could get away with it, but I really, really was not looking forward to do this. So I'm glad we have, uh, we will have done uh, this by today because of the amount of roots, like I said. And this one is really growing so well. So I don't want to disturb it, but we really need to do it now. Whoops, oh, that did go fairly, fairly easily. I hope you can see it. Um, let's put a pot there. So yeah, we have quite a big root system. So what I will do is I will uh, adjust the camera angle so we have a little bit more uh, of a vision. You probably can see it already. It's almost a mass of roots. So let's zoom a little bit more. Beautiful, isn't it? Such a beautiful root system. I have a few darker ones here, but I have also a lot of uh, good roots. And a darker root does not always mean that it's dead, but some are here. So that was to be expected because I grow this in this setup for three years, maybe even longer. So yeah. And orchids do have all the roots, they die off, they make new root system, etc. So this was to be expected. But I'm not going to mess with it. I just uh, try to see even this root 
is brown. I hope you can see it, or brownish, but it's still uh, firm. And we have a few that are dark there, but let's turn this around very carefully. Slowly, and we have a few brown roots here, but the main lee the main roots of the majority, I should say, is uh, are good. You can see here, these browns are a little bit soft. Yeah, if I squeeze on them, I can take the velamen off. So, but it's just just a teeny tiny bit compared to the the whole root system. So yeah, and like I said, I'm not gonna mess with it too much. Just the ones that I can re reach very easily, I will take off. That's it. I will just put it up like nothing happened. Well, at least I hope <laughs> the orchid uh, feels uh, that way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave it. Above we have some uh, roots that are covered in algae. Those are still alive. What about you? Yeah, your this one is mussy, so I'm gonna take that one off. So if I, uh, I don't know if it shows up in the camera, if it wants to focus. No, not really. But this one is an uh, older root. Oh, there we go. It's better, I think. But um, yeah, that's it. You see these beautiful new tips here. I have quite a lot in the in the pots as well. So what I did, let me grab it. I did uh, really get a uh, bucket for it, a transparent bucket. And let me zoom out a little bit more so we have a better view of it. There we go. <laughs> and so it uh, has quite a bit more room. I did uh, burn some holes on the underneath here, and this is the long. Uh, it's about a meter long uh, Cintiq. And I use uh, these as wicks. It's very wicking and beautiful material. So I will uh, put them around uh, in a pot so it, it, uh, the moisture will go upwards better. And I have a very long water meter here. So that's all uh, good to go. Let me grab the outer pot so I can put a bucket in there. So it stands up a little bit better. Oops, there it goes. I should put it like this. Let me uh, put it in first and then we can see that this is a really a, a good size up, as you can see. So I should be okay for at least one year and hopefully for even more, but I don't have more transparent buckets, bigger buckets than this. <laughs> so I will go with this one for now. And also I like to use this as a reference. So I now can see that I can have a first layer in of media before this will uh, get uh, too much out of the pot because that's the height of the plant as well because it was growing in the pot, of course. Um, so let's move this a little bit to the side. Can you all see it? A little bit more. Like that, yes. And here we go with the pumice. So let me uh, adjust the camera angle a little bit again. Like this. So we have this beautiful pumice that I just bought yesterday. These are the bigger ones because this one has quite fleshy roots. I did use some Cintiq and it, it uh, did like that Cintiq, but I don't need too much. I want to have a lot of air in there as well. So I only use the wicks, of course. That's enough Cintiq. So let's start filling up the bucket. I'm sorry for the noise. And I will zigzag these across the pot like that. 
And can we have another layer in? No, it's already high enough. So I will now just try to position the arcad and I do not need two water meters. So I will try to get this out. It went fairly easily. <laughs> so no roots attached to the, this water meter. So I can reuse that one for another arcad. Um, yeah, let's grab it and see if we can position it nicely. Some sort in the middle of the pot as much as we can. Yeah, this should give me, uh, I think, two years of growth at least. Room for two years of growth, I should say. Well, yeah, well, these bulbs are fairly big, so, but. It can at least grow this year beautifully. Let's uh, put the aerial root in there as well, in the back. And start filling up slowly because we have root tips. So I very try to do this very gently. I have my hands, in, this hand in front of the roots to protect them from the pumice falling on them. So, like I said, so I don't break them. So, let me uh, position the camera a little bit different so you can see a little bit better. I hope this is a little bit uh, a better angle so you can see. I still have some room. So, what I do is one hand in front of the uh, arcade, uh, the roots, and then I put the media in, uh, here in. So, it falls first onto my hand and then slowly inside of the pot. And because I have some pumice in, I now adjust the Cintiq, the wicks, like this and like that. So they will cover that layer with moisture as well. Let's grab some new Cintiq uh, pumice. And I need some in the back as well. Slowly letting it fall in the, the inside of that pot. Then I need a little bit Cintiq here as well. And so far so good. It goes very well with this repot. Just take your time and see what you need to do. And so far. I do not see any uh, root tips broken off, so, but I'm not finished yet, of course, but <laughs> so far, so good. So let's continue filling up this pot. Let's Cintiq can now be in here. It's very hard to get it all in frame. I apologize. I hope you can see enough so, to get a, uh, Good idea what I'm doing here. Need to adjust the water meter a little bit. It was uh, being in an angle. So this is the back of the arcade. So what I do is just I wiggle it around and push it towards the arcade. So it's getting into place a bit more and that creates some space be uh, between the pot and the water meter, which I will fill up with uh, pumice. Put some bit of Cintiq there, the wick, and just fill it up. Even here in the back, because these back bulbs did still have roots, so uh, working roots, so it needs uh, moisture as well there. I can have a little bit there behind the water meter and in between the arcade. So I will do it with the hand because the scoop is a little bit too big. Then I'm turning it around and I see that I have still some room here in front of the arcade, which needs some pumice. I will push the Cintiq down so it's not open to the air and thereby it will uh, wick better, of course. So, and now I'm going to take the arcade out of the outer pot. 
Here we are again. <laughs> yeah, I needed to put it on the floor because it was too heavy and too, uh, too high to lift it out on the table. But uh, I did get it out. It's a fairly big pot. Whoops, sorry for that. Uh, disturbance there because I bounced it to my mic. Um, so yeah, let's have a look. Can you see it? Yes. So far so good. You can see now the strings of Cintiq here. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm layering the Cintiq within the pumice and slowly build up towards the, the uh, edge of the pot. Like I said, so we have uh, moisture there as well. So I see here a little bit of an air gap. I think you can see it as well. We see some roots and I could have put in a little bit more uh, pumice there. So let's see, I try slowly Gently to push the arcus a little bit, but so I will now just push the uh, pumice downwards, just very gently. Don't want to overdo it. If we have a little bit of air gap there, it's not a big of a deal. But I always try to get in a little bit more uh, Cintiq uh, if we can. You also can use a stick if I have it. Yes. Oops some sort of stick if your fingers are a little bit too thick and um, yeah just gently push the pumice down I hope you can see it this is a big piece sometimes it helps if you push the arc a little bit back but it's too much media it's already uh, settled in quite well <laughs> so I just gently tap on the pumice and see if we can get it a little bit further down, yes, there it is. That was a fairly big piece that was uh, holding uh, all the others. A stick get, did get stick, I should say. And have you a little more? There's another one, it's very big. So, to push that in. There we go, we have a few more. So this can be a little bit time consuming, but uh, it's it's worth it, of course. The better the setup, the better, the happier the orchid will be. So, But we have a few air gaps here uh, now. Not that one big one, but a few bigger ones, and that's okay. I think even this one prefers it. A little bit more air around the roots because of the thick, fleshy roots. Yeah, I'm happy with it. So, the last thing to do is uh, give it a nice top layer of pebbles. Let me see. I have them here as well. So just gently putting this these guys on top. And this is... Uh, if you ask me, it looks nice, but it's also to, for preventing a top dry layer. And I'm doing this because most of the times the layer can be this thick if you don't, uh, especially in summer where e the water evaporates too quick. And it sounds a little bit um, silly, maybe because it stands in water, but even then it can create a uh, top, top dry layer. And this is actually a technique that uh, Annabelle used from the Arcade Room, and it really works. So I uh, do it as well, and I like these darker uh, stones, pebbles, I should say, because I like my uh, black and my dark grays. <laughs> but you can, uh, the color doesn't matter. These pebbles do not wick, uh, so they, you can wet them, but then they will dry up, but they prevent from the uh, water to evaporate too quickly like I said and it does the job so it's very uh, a very handy tip there so now I will uh, flush this and then we will uh, we'll put it back so I uh, will uh, see you at the sink and there it was uh, on the sink so it's very uh, handy to have even a kitchen in a arcade room um, because uh, I can do all this here so what I have is just oral water with a little bit of seaweed in it, just to make it a little bit happy again, in the sense that uh, it starts hopefully liking this pot. 
and I just gently uh, put the water in. There will always be a little bit of dust coming off, but not much. I, I don't wash my media that often if it, it isn't necessary. And these uh, pumice in these bags from this brand have barely any dust on them. So I don't wash them. I just always flush the orchid after repot and that's, uh, that's fine. And I do this for years, but it really works. And of course we put a tag back and what I did is just, I uh, did no, uh, write down the date and it's April 22 and you can see above it, the last repot was in March 19. So it, yes, it was over three years. I didn't remember that, but that's always uh, very handy to put it on your tag in case if you ask me. Um, and I also uh, have it in my notes, of course, but uh, then I can always see uh, when there was the last repot. So I will put it back in, uh, in the spot and then we will have a last final look at it. Well, actually, before we put it bad, back, <laughs> let's uh, see that water meter in action because this is why I'm liking it so much. I uh, will give it uh, some more water and just keep an eye on this thing while I'm watering my orchid. It's so easy and so handy, especially when you have quite a lot of orchids. And there it comes. Did you see it? So now I know how much water there is in that uh, reservoir. And I give it a little bit more because it's fairly dry media, so it will take up a little bit more. And that comes from experience. I saw that happening, especially when I do my repots. But this is uh, easy. And now I did take off uh, the cap so I can punch it. And I really know if it comes back straight up that there's still water. Sometimes these get stuck. So then they, it looks like there's enough water, but it isn't. So if I take these caps off and I then easily can uh, tap it and I know if it needs water or not. And that's how I water basically all, well, almost all my orchids in self watering. It's very, very easy. And I am so happy that I finally did it. I really, really like it. Wasn't looking forward to doing uh, this repot, but look, it's so beautiful. It really uh, is now looking better. It has room to grow, as we can see, and I think I can let it grow for two more years in this setup. And if it grows like this, I will uh, then have uh, to come up with another plant, uh, pl plant, with another plan, um, maybe an even bigger bucket, but then it probably will, will, will not be uh, transparent. And I really like those transparent pots because we can have a easily look at the roots, but we will see. I always can uh, divide it, of course, I know, but I really like to uh, grow my orchids as uh, big as I can to get those specimen size plants. So that's really the goal here, but we shall see. This was a fairly easy repot, luckily. And I think I didn't disturb it too much. I was very gently, as you can see, this pick off a few or a roots, but it wasn't bothering this orchid at all. So uh, I'm, I'm happy, I'm really, really happy. And this one is leaf is a little bit burned somewhere around, it's from an older bulb. I don't know what happens, but I have it here in the window. As you can see in my previous uh, video, I was talking about the shade paint and etc. It wasn't burned uh, this year, of course. I think two years ago, something like that. But um, yeah, I think it will do fine. So uh, thank you for watching. And uh, as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And for now, of course, uh, I hope to see you at one of my next videos. So bye bye.